Welcome on and all to a course on complex analysis. As I already stated in the post, we are about to start a course on complex analysis in which we will cover most of the concepts that are relevant for the CSAR net and uh, gate exam preparations. Okay. Since I am going to handle this course for my students as well, I will cover the theorems related problems and in between we will make some discussions about the uh, problems that are asked in CSAR net and uh, gate examinations as well. Yes, let us start with the basics. We will start with the very fundamental things that is from the complex numbers. So when we have been studying about the course on real analysis, we have seen about the number systems. The number system starts with the natural numbers that is the collection uh, 1, 2, etc. Right? So from 1, 2, etc. it goes till infinity. Okay? Along with this collection, if you add the set 0, that becomes the whole number. And here we are talking about the positive numbers. What if the count goes in the reverse direction then comes the concept of integers then what if the number is in this form in a fraction form so elements in the form p upon q where p and q are uh, integers with q non-zero and gcd of p and q is one so this is the uh, collection of rational numbers and then comes the collection of real numbers in between these two things, any number which cannot be written in rational form is called as the set of irrational numbers. So, till now we have dealt all these things. In the collection of irrational numbers, most of our square root rely on. Okay, whether it is square root of 1 or square root of 2, square root of 3, all these things comes under either this, uh, either a rational quantity, mostly it is not a rational quantity, either it is an integer or a irrational quantity okay now comes the question what happens to the square root of negative numbers okay so any negative number can be written as minus one times of that value itself so if you have to find out the square root of six this is nothing but square root of two with square root of three since we can write the six as a multiple of two and three so this is the property of a square root function. So using that property, if you have to evaluate the square root of minus a, you can find square root of minus 1 and square root of a, be it any number. Okay. I mean to say that be it any real number. A, if it is a negative real number, how to find out the square root of this one? This may be found using this ideology. So if we find what is square root of 1, sorry, square root of minus 1, then the answer to all the values of the square root of negative numbers is found. There comes the complex numbers. Okay. Still now there is no prop. Uh, still now we do not know the value of the square root of minus one. So we intuitively say that it is the imaginary number i. Okay. Imaginary number i or some people say it is iota. So better I will go with iota. Since we may be using the alphabet i to represent some summation i runs from 1 to n, so we must not get confused with this i and the imaginary value i. So, in the upcoming lectures of this course, I will represent this imaginary number i as iota. I, I, I call this as iota. That's it. Right? So, okay. This is an imaginary number. So, what do we mean by a complex number now only we are going to properly define what do we mean by a complex number so if we have to talk with the ideologies that we have studied in real analysis a complex number is an ordered pair in r2 okay that is any value in a real plane is called as complex number how if we take one axis as real axis and that another one as imaginary axis instead of taking both are real if we consider this way this element x y represents a complex number okay in rectangular coordinates we may write this way so complex numbers are usually denoted with the alphabet z z is 
here if you see your uh, x is your real part of z and y is imaginary part of z okay with the help of this iota this may also be written as x plus iota times of y okay we may write these things as well now we'll have to uh, recall the definitions and the ideologies that we have studied in uh, real plane that is if i say is it one and is it two are equal this will happen only if uh, my real part of z1 is same as that of real part of z2 and imaginary part of z1 is same as that of imaginary part of z2 suppose we give the notation that is z1 is equal to x1 plus i iota times y1 z2 is x2 plus iota times of y2 then z1 and z2 are equal if and only if x1 and x2 are equal and y1 and y2 are equal so hope these ideologies are very clear to you people now let me move forward and uh, tell you what these things are okay if you try to plot okay uh, let me have my z that is x y r x plus iota y okay this is x direction this is y direction in the sense okay here i must say this is real axis and this is imaginary axis okay so here i will have to measure some quantity that is going to be my x okay let this quantity be my x so if i at this point this is x comma 0 okay then we will have to measure the quantity y somewhere here okay this quantity so this is 0 comma y so what would happen you generally our uh, point x y is going to be this one so this is our point x comma y that is our complex number x plus iv so a complex number is a sum of a real value and a imaginary value right so this may also be written as x plus iota times of 0 and this may be written as 0 plus iota times of y okay hope you people uh, do these things and in the course of abstract algebra we might have studied the set of complex numbers forms a group under multiplication okay and the set of non-zero complex numbers forms a group under sorry i said set of complex numbers forms a group under addition and a set of non-zero complex numbers forms a group under multiplication how do we define addition and multiplication in these things okay uh, usually the set of complex numbers is denoted using the letter script c okay this is the set of complex numbers right let me take two complex numbers in c so here this z1 may be written as x1 y1 and my z2 may be written as x2 y2 so the addition of these two complex numbers is just the component wise addition whereas the product of these two things is x1 x2 minus y1 y2 comma x1 y2 plus y1 x2 so this is how we define the multiplication of two complex numbers okay uh, i told uh, this is going to form a group under addition as well as the non-zero elements is going to form a group under multiplication if that is so what is going to be the additive identity and the additive inverse multiplicative identity multiplicative inverse all these things has to be studied so i am not going to prove them completely uh, the closure property and the associative property that you can very well check since this x1 x2 y1 y2 are real numbers using the properties of real numbers things are happening to be true the additive uh, Additive identity is going to be the 0 that is 0 comma 0 or this may be written as 0 plus iota times of 0 and the additive inverse is minus z1 okay this is the additive inverse of 
is even that as minus x1 comma minus y1 okay multiplicative identity is 1 this may be written as 1 comma 0 that is 1 plus iota times of 0 and the multiplicative inverse is it's simple actually in simpler terms we may write this as 1 upon uh, z1 but still it is x1 uh, better uh, let me write it using the iota notation so 1 plus it is something of this form and this transforms to uh, x1 minus iota times of uh, y1 x1 squared plus y1 squared and uh, we see uh, in simpler notation we may write this as x1 upon x1 square plus y1 square comma minus y1 upon x1 square plus y1 square this is our multiplicative inverse how did i do this calculation that we will see in the due course so okay here one more thing one more name that i would like to register for this additive identity and multiplicative identity are additive identity is also known as zero element when we when we consider this setup, this algebraic uh, structure in the uh, concept of rings, okay, and uh, a set with two binary operations, that we call this additive identity as zero element and the multiplicative identity as unit element. Okay, so having satisfied all the requirements, so we have seen this is the set of complex numbers forms a field. Okay, whenever we say a field, we see uh, we have to remember that. There is a addition which is well defined with there is a multiplication operation which is well defined and that is satisfying the requirements that is the uh, 10 conditions abelian group and uh, addition and the non-zero complex numbers forms uh, non-zero elements forms uh, an abelian group and a multiplication and the distributive loss holds. All these are happening to be true and that is why this turns to be a field. Okay, we have seen uh, how these things are happening and uh, Next, uh, I would like to talk about few more properties. That is, if you have two elements, okay, we have seen how to multiply these things. But what is the uh, division of these things? This is x1, y1 upon x2, y2, or this may be written as x1 plus iota times of y1 upon x2 plus iota times of y2. So this may be written as x1 plus iota times of y1 and we have seen 1 upon x2 plus iota times of y2 we have seen the value of this one so that is x1 plus iota times of y1 multiplied with x2 minus iota times of y2 upon x2 square plus y2 squared so if you just make a product of these two things uh, you can very well see it is x1 okay uh, x1 x2 Mm, plus y1 y2 uh, upon x2 squared plus y2 squared plus iota times of x1 sorry i think uh, y1 x2 minus x1 y2 upon x2 squared plus y2 squared so this is how we divide two complex numbers provided the denominator one is non-zero complex numbers okay if it is non-zero then we'll have the case divide by zero category that is why we are uh, neglecting that one right so now uh, i think uh, i don't need to work out few problems on it hope you people can uh, understand it at the end of these basic things let me create let me create a worksheet kind of a thing and i'll upload a that one in the description link that after seeing all these uh, lectures you may try that and see whether you are uh, and you have understood these things clearly or not okay a basic problem so a basic kind of a prerequisite worksheet kind of a thing that i'll upload you may try that okay and the binomial formula is holding true for this one as well like uh, if you have is it one plus is it two squared so this may be written as z1 plus z2 multiplied with z1 plus z2. So when you do it, you will have z1 squared plus z1 z2 plus 
z2 z1 plus z2 squared that is z squared z2 squared right so this one may also be written as z1 squared plus 2 times of z1 z2 plus z2 squared since c is a the set of complex numbers satisfies commutativity under addition and multiplication so in general the binomial expansion for uh, any power holds to that is summation k runs from 0 to n n c k is it one to the power c1 to the power k c2 to the power n minus k where uh, n runs from 1 to any value okay and we know that this n c k is n factorial upon k factorial n minus k whole factorial right so with which i stop this lecture and in the upcoming lecture we will see how complex numbers can be treated as vectors and some more properties and the operations on complex numbers thank you